Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In this video, I'm going to show you 12 things you can create using the Toil and Trouble Sweep by Stampin' Up and Trick or Tweet Stamp Set. Okay, so what we'll be focusing on in this video are projects you can create which are great for craft fairs, to give us gifts, Halloween baskets, treats for friends, oh and it's even lightning and thunder outside. How cool is that for this Halloween video? Okay, now this sweet Toil and Trouble is available in the holiday catalog which will come out on September 5th, 2018. If you need a holiday catalog, please contact me. Okay, I can't make this up. That, that is actually happening outside my house right now and it's also getting dark. Okay, so the Toil and Trouble framelits I used. Okay, I also used the Cauldron Bubble Stamp Set. Okay, the, the actually the framelits are called Cauldron Framelits cauldron bubble stamp set and I used a trick or tweet stamp set now this isn't actually part of the suite this is a standalone stamp set it's super adorable and it really complements the toil and trouble so therefore I thought it was great to just combine projects plus I use anything and everything I have okay so I'll be telling you about the different products as we go okay let's start with this jar and you can buy these at the dollar store these jars and what's great about them is that they pull your tea candle out now I like to use the electric tea candles because you don't have to worry about being flammable and also they just look cool for home decor. You just take your designer series paper, the Toil and Trouble designer series paper, you wrap it around the jar and the, the height you're going to cut it depends on the design you want to get. Now I wanted to capture this cute little cat and this cauldron pattern so that's why I, I chose the particular height I did but it just all depends. Okay let me show you this spooky bat punch. Whoops, sorry, my tripod is falling. Okay, this is a spooky batch punch, which is part of the suite. I love this bat punch. So you can cut out the paper, the designer series paper. It'll cut, it coordinates with the bats on the paper. But I just chose to instead just use my brother's scan and cut, and I cut out a lot of the bats myself, like that way. Okay, and, but also what's great about the punch is you can just take any paper. Like I took this paper from Miss and Magic. It was called Glimmer or Glitter Paper from Miss and Magic, and I just punched out some bats with it, and I can I can decorate things with it. I'm not even sure what color that is, but it seemed to match this Granny Apple Green pretty darn well, even though it came out before Granny Apple Green was even a real color with them. Okay, now what else did I use? Let's find it. Here it is. This is what I used, and I'll be using this a lot in this video. Glittered Organdy Ribbon. This is coming out September 5th. I can't get enough of this stuff. It's What's really nice about it is that after you tie it, it has a little bit of wire inside, so it, it, it helps you straighten out your bows, because sometimes you can't get your bows to turn the right way, and in this case, it was pretty easy. I use the Sentiment Trick or Treat a lot on, on these projects and the three quarter inch Circle Punch. If I used outside products, I'll have a link to those in the show notes or the description. Let me put that back there. Next, I want to show you my mini coffee cup project. And I just called it, this is like a witch on a wobble. I have little wobble springs, I'll link to those. But I put those on everything. I put. I love it because that way she doesn't get caught on the lid. The little witch, could, I can still open the lid of the coffee cup. Let me show you what I have in here. I just used, I just put mini Mentos in here. Sometimes I put a K cup, because a K cup fits really well inside these mini coffee cups. But in this case, I just, I'm just trying to feature this designer series paper. And so I just covered the mini Mentos in that paper. Four fit in there, and I tried to squeeze in a Hershey Nugget as well, but it wouldn't fit in the cup. Okay, so use K-Cups, use candy. I mean, anything you want to put in these mini coffee cups, they're really awesome. And again, just some more, some more bats that I embellished with. Okay, my, my die is from, uh, the mini coffee cup die is from Stamp Doctor. And I'll have a link to that. All right, so next I want to show you these cute little test tubes. And I just love this. This is from, okay, so Trick or Treat has this cute little, this one, the elephant. And he's wearing a, he's wearing a little mask and has the bat. And I just love that one. So I just did Batty for you for the sentiment. These are sweet tarts inside. You can get sweet tarts at the Dollar Tree. And in fact, you can fill probably three or four test tubes with just one box of sweet tarts. Designer series paper. Uh, let's see, what else? Sentiments, uh, label punch. It's called Classic Label Punch some bats, let's see, this little sticker, I, I did another video teaching you how to create sticker magnets, and I had a lot of leftover stickers from 
my animal outing project. So that, that's these are just little 3D bottle cap stickers. Okay, links to those I'll have. But that's awesome, little ghost. And just you can just decorate these test tubes any way you want. Test tubes are by Martha Stewart. And I used the blends markers to color in the little elephant. Where's the second test tube? Just when I have everything, there it is. It's right in, right in front of me. I, I had everything right near in arm's reach for this video. Witch's hat, um, little cat from the designer series paper. I love these little brooms. Uh, that was one of the patterns on the paper. These are Mentos candies, but you can put M&Ms, Skittles, I mean, whatever you want inside these tubes. And these are great for craft fairs. If you saw my craft fair video on Christmas craft fair ideas, I filled this with coffee flavored M&Ms, which are a little piece of heaven. And coffee flavored M&Ms, then I decorated it with coffee break, sweet paper, and they were a big hit at the craft fair. In fact, a lot of, a lot of people wanted those. Okay, so one, two, three, I'm up to number, project number four. Remember I told you I'm gonna show you a dozen projects, so please stick around because the final project is super, super awesome. Okay, this is number four. This is um, the, again, it's just a wobble. He's on a wobble, some sentiments. I ran out of the two inch bags that Stampin' Up! sells two inch by eight inch treat, cellophane treat bags. But so I just used a card bag. It's called a clear card envelope. And I use, I created this nugget treats with that. And on my blog, thepaperchef.com, there's probably 20 examples of nuggets. I create nuggets with every single wheat that comes out by Stampin' Up. It's good to let people know at craft fairs, if you create nugget treats that you are, that they contain nuts because these have, these are little piece of heaven. They have toffee and almonds in them. They're made by Hershey's. Okay, let's put that aside. I just created one of those this time. Okay, next I have these cute little, let me just, let me just check off Crafty Friends because I don't wanna mess up, I don't wanna miss anything. So one, these are just called, I'm calling these mini Mentos treat holders, okay? And all I did, all I did was, this is just to feature the designer series paper. So I was trying to show the designer series paper when I send out the, the catalogs and, and just give, give my crafty friends little treats. So these are matchbook holders. You, I've created matchbook holders and it's on my blog for many, many things, including tea bags, uh, coffee, coffee candy by Werther's, and lots of other things fit in here. So you want something that you can kind of, you, you staple the bottom. It's very, these are like super, super easy to make. But it's just a way to feature your designer series paper. You can also put sentiments on the front, which I've done, and sentiments on the inside as well. Okay, next are these little candy boxes. Okay, these are, we sell these at Stampin' Up. These are little two inch uh, treat boxes, I think they're called. Okay, so I, I stuffed this one with mini Mentos. There's nine mini Mentos fitting here perfectly which I love, and then I just decorated it. Again, wobble, I like to put my things on wobble. I buy the, buy the, I think the 48 pack, these wobbles, and they just give nice dimension and interaction with them. So I just use witches hats. I use designer series paper inside the box. Okay, and then, and for this box I used, I filled it with gummy worms. Because the Halloween candy is not really out yet, so I had a hard time finding the, you know, the candy for these projects. So I just found candy that would work. Gummy worms work, and they look kind of spooky anyway. Oh, there's the blade to my brother's cannon cut. Got stuck on there. Pumpkins. I'll be using these pumpkins for some more fall and autumn projects when I get to that. But I just figured I could use it for the Halloween project as well. And I love this little, little mummy cat. All right, so let's put these aside and put that over here. And now we are on to these little tiny clips. So what I did for these, and if you saw my video about, I think I showed these in one of my videos, but I just created little little paper clips and I just glued them. So I what I did is I punched using, where's the punch? Okay, I punched one way. Okay, I put the, this is, this is the new paper by the way. Fantastic. It's called black foil paper. It is fantastic. I'll show you the spider webs I created with that paper. So you, you, put, you put this punch on the paper and then 
you turn the paper over and you punch again. So then you have the mirror image of all your bats. And then I just glued them together and I made little bats. That make, these make great bookmarks and things. All right, so we'll put the bats there. Now, the next project is really many, many, many projects in one. So really, I'm showing you more than a dozen projects today because the next project is tags. And I made so many examples of tags that, that um, you're just going to be like, wow, cool, you can do so much with the tags. I mean, just in all the different com combinations. Okay, so hopefully you'll get to see all the possibilities. Now, this is just a tag in a, in a mini envelope. I just die cut the envelope and I decorated the envelope with cardstock and I put some pumpkins in there. And you can also put treats in there. Not all my projects today are treats. They're just, this one's just a bookmark project. And the little witch, I did a video on how to cut out these witches using the brother scan and cut. And before I got some good practice, I was cutting the little witch's hands off. And so then in the video I showed, I showed you how to make sure to get the hands in there. But so I had to cover that mistake up with the little trick or treat sentiment. And I'm telling you that, but people who I give this to would no idea. They'd be like thinking it's awesome. They wouldn't even know how I got to this point. All right, some more tags and some more just Again, I just kind of like to wobble things. So got batty for you, a green sediment. Now this, this here features some product that we have. Now this product is only available while supplies last. So please check out my store, which will be linked in the description. Check out this set of framelits. It's called Stitch Seasons. And it stitches the inside and out. So I just inked around the edges with Highland Heather. And that's also what I colored the, the um, elephant with. Okay, so that is just a great set of framelits. I mean, I'd get it just for, I'd get the set just for that, but it also has lots of cool other designs on it. One of them coordinates with the stamp set, which I'm not gonna show you because that's not what this video is about. But I just wanna show you that that's how I got this tag. And then this tag here, so what I did for the trick or tweet, which is super, super adorable, and again, he's wobbles, I used these. I use the coordinating colors. Now in this suite, the, there's Granny Apple Green and Highland Heather, along with some other colors. So I use these decorative masks. They're called Pattern Party Decorative Mask by Stampin' Up. And what I did is I took this punch, I guess it's called the Everyday Label Punch, punched out a bunch of shapes first using Whisper White cardstock. Then I put the mask on top of the, of the shape. Here, here's a sample. Okay, I stuck here. I stuck the mask on top of my shape and then I sponged and then just the color comes through and then I had loads of these. I did it all first. In fact, it's good to mass produce when you're making crafts. Just mass produce. Get a lot of stuff made and, and then you do things. You get a lot more done that way because when you're ready to put the embellishments on them, then you're already ready because I colored these. I colored, I cut out the stamps. I did a video on how to cut out these stamps using the brother scan and cut. Then I colored them all. Then I stamped the sentiments and punched all those out and then I attached them. So you just do it in phases. All right, we're still doing tags. This again is that foiled paper. This is awesome paper. Look at the shine on that. Okay, and I just added some bats. There's that glimmer or organdy ribbon. Okay, or glitter. And the little doggy is super adorable. And there's more. There is, there are the stitch framelits. Okay, the stitch framelits I mean, not stitch framelits, stitch seasons, stitch seasons framelits. When you use this foil paper in the stitch seasons framelits and you run it through your big shot, it just pops right out. Like this is so easy and look at the stitching. So totally, totally love that. And then I have for this tag, I made the cat a little darker because my cat earlier wasn't, see, I didn't like the cat being so light. So. I think I used ivory, my blends marker, but then I, then I said, let me just go to crumb cake. Okay, now what I do is when I send out the catalogs to my customers, I try to say like what I'm featuring on the, so I make a lot of these labels, they come 80 per page. I'll try to link to all this stuff, you know, but it's gonna take me a while to get my notes together for this video. But I, I put on the labels, like, so for example, I'm using trick or treat, so they can find it. When they get the catalog, holiday catalog, they can find out, well, how did she do that? So. So the stamp set was Trick or Tweet. The Toil and Trouble is the designer series paper. And I let my customers know so they can find these products again. 
All right, so that was so that was tags. That was actually one project, but there was lots and lots of tags. Okay, next I want to show you a little jar of honey. So you know it's not all about candy on Halloween, but it is about being super sweet. So here here is a witch. I colored the witch using the blends, and there's that ribbon again. And let me I'm just going to show you an empty jar so you can kind of get an idea. These mini mason jars, I bought these at AC Moore. Okay, so. They, they're like in the party favor section, more like for weddings and things. People would give out these little mini mason jars. So that's an empty one. My friend has a beehive. And so he gives me natural honey, local honey. And I'm always giving it as gifts. And you may have seen in my other videos, like how I use the beautiful day stamp set to decorate a honey jar, etc. But so I, this time I said, well, why not make a Halloween honey jar? I mean, why not? This paper's so awesome. And it actually, the pattern came out nice on the honey jar. So there's that burgundy ribbon. Now, I, I kind of, it looks like a bad makeup job. I did put a little too much lipstick on this witch, but that's a stamped and then I used the die. So I stamped the witch and I used the coordinating die to cut out the witch. All right, and I used the blends markers to color in. I got these little spoons at um, Tuesday morning, these little spoons and they fit right in the side. And I just uh, put a little glue dot in there. And there's one of those stickers. Again, that's a sticker bottle cap sticker I'm gonna call it all right so let's put him aside let's put him over there now we have we showed you tags we showed you jars now I have bags and one of my blends lost its lid but we'll worry about that after this video is over over here let me do this you don't want to leave like this is blends don't want to leave your lids off because it'll dry out all right bags so I did tags now I'm gonna do bags so again Halloween candy's not out so I decided just to um, get some gummy worms from the drugstore and they they look Halloweenish so that works and I made some some little tags from the trick or tweet and this is from this ribbon is from, again from toil and trouble and then I, the little bat is from toil and trouble so again they wobble and again decorative mask and the color in that one is Highland Heather for those bricks so you can just like make great Halloween baskets by just making a bunch of stuff and just sort of like throwing it all together in a basket and it all follows a theme. Okay, so now for our final two projects, believe it or not, that was number 10, I am going to show you boxes, okay? And what I need to do is just so the table is not so busy is I need to clear off a spot for this in the middle because super cuteness okay we have the mini pizza box okay I've made I've made four of these so far I'm going to show you two of them and the two of them are already gone because I needed some gifts for for to send out and I just uh, there and my husband was going somewhere and I needed to like send something along with him to give someone we hadn't seen in a while so in my one of my videos I did show you how to I did talk about the pizza box so we have these mini pizza boxes in our catalog, Stampin' Up. And so what I did is I stamped the witch, I colored the witch with the blends markers. I cut out the witch using the cauldron framelits. I put the witch on a wobble. So we got witch on a wobble again. I decorated the pizza box. I mass produced my decorations for pizza boxes using my brother's can and cut. All right, cutting out all the parts I need. And then I decorated the inside as well. And I used cute little rocks that matched the holiday theme and some Hershey nuggets that I wrapped in. I even put some things in there like there's a half, when I messed up a couple witches, I just used half the witch down there to decorate with. There's her little cat cut out with the coordinating framelit. Okay, so the little rocks are just table decorations. And then um, in here, that's, this one's from Trick or Tweet and this is from Toil and Trouble. Okay, so that's, that's my witch box. I also did a baddie for you box, but I don't have him anymore. I gave him away, but he was in one of my other videos. Now, don't forget about the pets this Halloween time. So I got this pet paper from a craft store um, for making pet treats. And they're very popular at craft fairs. Okay, so you can do this the same idea for Christmas or, or Halloween, but here's, here's what's inside. So you have the, I put the paws, but I also used some Halloween paper because I, w I was trying to tie the Halloween theme into this. And there you go. You have little milk bone, mini milk bones fit in there. You just put them all in a bag. 
so that you know they can reuse the box for whatever and I just put decorate here's batty for you inside and then I put the little milk bones I put the little gl glimmer ribbon and the little bat okay so those are mini pizza boxes I'm gonna make room because I've saved the best for last what we have now are what's called the Baker's box this is something new in our in our holiday catalog okay and I have created three of these and I'm just going to talk about what I did here. Okay. So let's start out with the Baker box itself. The Baker box comes plain and with a acetate window inside. Okay. What you can do just with the plain box is make it super cute just by stamping right onto it. Just be sure you're stamping the right side up because when you fold it, you know, the, the flaps will go up. So I did that. So what I did is I put all of these onto a block. I put the ghost, I put Happy Halloween, the frog, and the cat onto a block, and I made sure that the block fit on each side of the box. So then I stamped the same thing around the box, except for this one I changed it to bubble bubble, toil and trouble, and Happy Halloween, okay? Then what I did is I, I had cut out all these little mm, embellishments, okay? And so I decorated with the embellishments. I, I colored this with the blends. We talked about those tags and the masking and all the sentiments. And this is something new though. This is the black foil paper that comes in Toil and Trouble Street. Look at how awesome this spider web is. It, I didn't even have to use Wayne Costello, folks. This is just glimmery as it is. And these little super, super cute spider trinkets, they, they thread right onto the ribbon. I didn't have to do anything. They went right onto the ribbon. And then you can kind of point them where you want them because the ribbon has a little bit of wire in it. And I put a spider web on each box. And my mom made cookies. Okay, thanks mom. She made chocolate chip cookies. So I'll be giving this away right away because the cookies are fresh. I gotta give this, this one away right away. And this one can wait a little bit, but I also, also have someone in mind for this. So this is my witch again. So I colored the witch, she's on a wobble. And it was good to have a wobble for her because she doesn't touch the ribbon that way. And she's kind of standing up. And then I have the little cat and trick or treat again. I just filled this with uh, tea candles, um, lollipops, candy, mini mentos, I mean, some grass, whatever you want. Now, here's what I want to talk about for these two. I'll just show you the decorations for this one. And again, spider webs on both. The cat came out of the framelits. Okay, so we got the idea of the decorations. Now, for the box itself. Uh, okay, you take the white, you take the white box, and you, you cover up this with a mask. In other words, like you just, when you don't want to get like, you don't want to get any dye on this part. And then you, uh, you open it up and you lay it flat and you sponge. So I sponged this, but this is granny apple green. I just sponged the box and, I, and then it let it dry. Okay, and that's it. And then this one is Highland Heather. So really just all I did was take my, I didn't have any, I don't even have the re-inkers folks. I just have a stamp pad, that's all I have. And some sponges. I, what I did is like I added a couple drops of water to some of my ink from my ink pad, not straight onto the ink pad, but into a little bowl. And then I just sponged around and just sort of like painted them. And then now they match the suite very well. All right, so I love the baker's boxes and I can't wait to see how my, my friends react when I give them these items. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel for more crafty inspiration. Please let me know what things that you create with this suite. And I'd love to see some of your samples as well. This is the Paper Chef. Until next time, see you later.